Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome to our College Prep Virtual College Fair powered by StriveScan. My name is Sabelle. I will be your facilitator for this evening's session. I'm super, super excited to get going with this virtual college fair, but I do have some housekeeping items to share with you all. Now, first and foremost, just remember uh, that these representatives here are going to have just a few minutes to tell you a little bit about themselves. So what I like to call this virtual college fair is more of an appetizer session, right? So you'll get a little bit of a taste of a little bit of everything, um, but it is up to you to take some notes, grab some contact information, and then do your due diligence afterwards to see what the main entree for you is for your next uh, few years in college. So with that said, just a few of these housekeeping items uh, before we get started. Remember, your camera and microphone are turned off, okay? So you're muted, video is off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you, but you're probably wondering, well, Sabella, I have all these questions I want to ask these representatives. Where do I ask them? You can use that Q&A button in your Zoom toolbar. So if you look at your Zoom toolbar right now, towards the middle, you will see a Q&A button in which you can press and go ahead and type in your questions to the presenters at any time. Now I stress at any time, it is about a 45 minute session. So we don't have a ton of time and we'll not have a live Q&A at the end. So it is important, even if your um, college that you wanna ask a question to hasn't gone yet, you are more than welcome to still ask the question and they'll actually answer those questions all throughout the 45 minutes. So feel free to ask it at any time and do not wait until the last minute. If you could also do us a favor and please make sure you put the school's name within your question That'll be super awesome because then we know who the question goes to, okay? You can also check the chat. Now, although you really can't write back to your representatives in the chat, only the Q&A, they might put some awesome information in the chat, like their contact information. So definitely check the chat periodically as well. Sign up for more sessions. There are more college presentations happening and, and are offered. So check the schedule on the website and see what else you can sign up for. And last but not least, you know, maybe a friend missed out on tonight, or maybe mom wants to check out a few of these schools with you, or maybe you just want to relive the fun with us. Either way, you can do that. All of these sessions are being recorded, and they will be found at the URL or the website address you see on your screen currently. Now, with that said, I'd love to get started with our first college up for tonight, and that is Bowdoin College. Perfect, thank you so much. Um, and we're just gonna go ahead and jump right in. These things move um, at breakneck speed. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen um, and start my time and talk very quickly. Thank you all so much for spending some time with us. Welcome, um, hopefully, to a tiny slice of Bowdoin. Um, you should be looking at the Bowdoin icon if I've done this correctly. Um, and I'm just gonna go ahead and speed through some information and towards the end, I'll drop a link um, in the chat. So good evening, my name is Jackie. I'm an Associate Dean of Admissions here at beautiful Bowdoin College, which you can now see on the screen. Um, our historic campus is about 210 acres, which are connected by a network of busy paths. This here is our main academic quad. And so most students do get to and from their residences and dining halls by walking back and forth or biking or skateboarding. And this is just a picture of what Mid Coast Maine looks like in the fall. Just so that you get a sense of orientation, we are up there. We are there on the little blue dot located right um, <clears throat> in the downtown area of a coastal town called Brunswick. We're about three miles from the ocean, um, but everything in Brunswick is very walkable. You can see um, in the background of this picture, this tower right in the back next to the steeple, that's actually the campus. And our hometown provides everything we need, good coffee, local restaurants and cafes, a favorite gelatery, um, a grocery store, and some incredible access for our students who are here. So going to school here in Brunswick really feels like you become part of the town when you're a member of our Bowdoin community. We welcome students from all over the country to um, the closest airport, which is Portland, Maine. Um, so we bring students in from everywhere across the country and welcome students from all over the country and all over the world, um, both sending in and out, um, inviting our international students to join us and then um, sending students out for study abroad. The spirit of Bowdoin, we are a small liberal arts college that enrolls just under 2,000 students. So as a small liberal arts college, we have a huge emphasis on, emphasis on camaraderie um, and on collaboration across the board. 
Um, one of the things that we leverage when we talk about our, um, our location is, of course, the resources that our location here in Maine um, affords us. This is a picture um, of some research that's taking place at the Schiller Coastal Study Center. Um, this is a 118 acre facility about 20 minutes south of campus located directly on the Gulf of Maine. The Gulf of Maine is the fastest warming body of water in the world, and so there's an extraordinary resource um, to do hands-on research, especially into issues of climate change, biology and chemistry. Um, we just built some brand new labs down there, um, but it's a really incredible opportunity. This picture is also a really great picture of roughly what you can expect your class sizes to be. Um, we have a huge number of seminar style classes which cap off at 16 students. And so you do get a sense of really being able to work with alongside your professors. But what's really important to us is to talk about the spirit of what it's like to go to a liberal arts college. We were founded on the principle that the college shouldn't only benefit the people who get an education here, but that Bowdoin itself as a school was founded to benefit the common good. That means that Bowdoin students are looking for, or that when we review application, we're looking for students who are willing and excited to work together, who root for each other. Here at Bowdoin, what we say is that it's not us against each other, it's us against the biggest problems that our world can be facing. We do this through emphasis on interpersonal relationships, communication with each other, and relationships and unparalleled access to your faculty members. We really emphasize <clears throat> learning in and out of the classroom and in the dining hall and at lectures and events um, in your dorms and throughout your club activities. What are some outcomes from this education? Um, that doesn't mean um, this focus on the common good doesn't mean that all of our students work in nonprofits, um, although many do. And this is a small selection of places where our students do end up if they choose to go the nonprofit route. But we also have graduates who work at, or they founded, or they sit on the boards of some of the largest and most impactful organizations on earth. We hope that a Bowdoin education to them means that it's flexible and adaptable, but it asks, and we ask that our students hold themselves to a higher standard. We really believe that you can be successful and creative and visionary, but also consider things like social responsibility. If you're not quite thinking about going to work um, just after college, but you are thinking about pursuing a graduate degree, these are the schools that take the largest number of Bowdoin graduates. Almost 20% of our most recent graduating class attended graduate school um, <clears throat> right after leaving Bowdoin at these schools and of course many more. So um, as part of these presentations, we are always asked, what do you look for in a college application? This is our go-to chart. And the easiest way for me to describe this is on the left side, um, grades on the right side, heart. So on the left side, um, what I always say is that we distill our college application into two questions that each admissions officer is hoping to answer. One, can the student be academically successful here? And two, if so, what kind of roommate will they be? We are, as you can see on this chart, need blind in our admissions process. That means that your family's ability to pay for college will never ever negatively impact your college decision. And then test scores. We have been test optional since 1969. So just know that if you are thinking about applying to college without your test scores, um, we have over 50 years of experience in reading without test scores and are fully committed to the holistic process. Again, that is need blind. We also meet 100% of demonstrated need um, for all students um, who apply for financial aid. So I'm just gonna finish off um, in my last, I think 20 seconds um, with the offer of the college. Um, this is a poem that um, is really important to the core of how we think about the experience here at Bowdoin. Um, and it is the material for the optional supplement in the college essay. So like I said, as I stop sharing, I will drop a link in the chat. If you wanna just let us know that you are here, you can go ahead and fill that out and get on our email list. Um, and I will drop my email in the chat as well for you to be in touch. Otherwise, lovely to meet you and I will pass it off to my next colleague. Thank you so much. If you have any questions for Bowdoin College, please put it in the Q&A. All right, next up we have Bucknell University. Hello everyone, thanks for joining us. I'm gonna share my screen here. Okay, my name is Kristen Morrow. I'm an assistant director of admissions at Bucknell. I've been at Bucknell for seven years. 
I've been in higher education for about 15 years. Um, my husband's an alum of Bucknell. Um, we were married on campus, so Bucknell has been a big part of our lives for many years. I'm going to share with you quickly in my next in the next six minutes um, a little bit about Bucknell. Um, Bucknell does all it can to provide a comprehensive experience for our students, both academically and holistically. Our students are intellectually curious, they're engaged, and they're interested. They like learning from a variety of lenses and they value community. But the best thing about Bucknell and really what makes us distinctive is the combination of these two words, small university. We are a small university. We have all the resources and facilities of a university that's 36,000 students, yet our total enrollment is 3,600 students. So our facilities, lab spaces, workspaces, classrooms, design studios are more than ample for our students. So here's a few facts about us. We're a national university located in Lewisburg, Pennsylvania, which is really the center of the state of Pennsylvania. We're rooted in a liberal arts tradition with disciplines or majors across these three colleges that you see on the screen, the College of Arts and Sciences, the College of Engineering, and the Freeman College of Management. These colleges complement one another, and that broad liberal arts foundation provides students with an understanding of how these majors work together. We believe very strongly in this interdisciplinary approach. So not only are you going to take subjects in your major, but also subjects outside of your major. Um, uh, Bucknell takes it to another level, given the intersection of selective liberal arts and professional programs, with many of them nationally recognized and ranked. We have over 60 majors, over 70 minors. Um, life doesn't happen in a straight line. And we believe that an interdisciplinary approach to your education is going to prepare you for that jagged line, sort of like COVID being the jagged line. Um, our class sizes are about 30. Upper level classes get down to 10 and 15 in a classroom. Our student faculty ratio is nine to one. And 100% of our professors have their PhDs in their fields of study. 0% of our classes are taught by grad assistants or teaching assistants. You're being taught by full professors and they're widely available to help you. You'll see them everywhere on campus. You'll see them in the Bucknell um, Bison Snack Bar in their offices, walking their dogs across campus. Research is a big part of the academic experience here and it's widely available. As a side note, we only have 30 graduate students, but we have 3,600 undergraduate students. So what that means is research is not gobbled up by the graduate students. It's widely available for the undergraduate students. What you're seeing here is an animal behavior major doing research with her baboons, who are her research partners. Um, a fun fact about Bucknell is that we're the only undergraduate institution in the nation that has a primate center right here on campus. So we have baboons and monkeys who live uh, right on campus with us over by the field hockey fields. Um, we also offer a robust program of study abroad um, with over 100 pre-approved programs all over the world. About 50% of our students uh, study abroad. We also have a Bucknell Inn program like Bucknell in London, Bucknell in Espana, Bucknell in France, where a cohort of students go with a professor abroad and study wherever that professor is teaching for the semester. Our students are actively engaged in what's next after Bucknell, and they're met by a very supportive staff, faculty, and alumni who assist them with questions like, what do I want to do after Bucknell? How do I get there? And what does that look like? Um, our alums come back every year for internship and job fairs, and there's an online job database called Bucknell Connect, and that assists students with finding jobs and internships. Um, 94% of our recent grads are either employed in graduate school or in some type of volunteer experience. Average starting salary is roughly um, $64,000. So what is there to do on campus? Um, we have a very active, vibrant campus life. Um, we are division one in the Patriot League for sports. Um, we also have intramural and club sports. Um, we have all of the activities that mirror a high school experience, um, student government, um, volunteer activities, um, political organizations. Um, we also have a very vibrant arts community, so art 
music, theater, dance. Um, one of the great things I think about Bucknell is you don't have to be a major in one of the arts in order to participate. Um, we also have some wonderful campus traditions. And then housing on campus. Um, we're a residential university, so housing is guaranteed for all four years. Um, we have singles and doubles and triples and apartments. Um, we also have um, uh, 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 residential communities. So as a first year student, you can um, elect to join one of these communities. Um, and it's a, a living community centered around a common theme. And then your first year foundational course is tied into that theme. Um, examples of those would be like the arts. Um, one of the ones this past year was social justice. Um, and finally, um, our admissions procedures. We are an early decision university. So um, we have early decision one and two, which are binding agreements. Um, and you'll see the, the deadlines right there on your screen. And then we also have regular decision. Um, about 65% of our students are on some type of financial aid. So if you um, wanted to apply for financial aid, we require the CSS profile uh, when you apply. And then once you're admitted, we ask that you fill out the FAFSA. Um, we are test optional. We've been test optional for three years um, and we're continuing on a five-year pilot program. Um, we do read our applications holistically, um, which means we are looking at the whole person. Um, we look at your, uh, primarily the rigor of your curriculum. Listen, and grades. I'm sorry. That's I'm all right. Just, I'm sorry, if you just wanna wrap up, thank you. <laughs> All right, you all, thank you so, so much. If you have any questions for Bucknell University, please put it in the Q&A. Next up, we have Colgate University. Hello, everyone. My name is Jameer Abney. I'm one of the Associate Deans of Admission here at Colgate. Sharing my screen really quickly here. Uh, okay, so. You are viewing Colgate's beautiful 575 acre campus, which is very important to us. The beauty of the campus is something we've put a lot of time and energy into. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that later in the slideshow. But first, I wanna give you a couple of quick facts about who we are. Um, Colgate is a residential liberal arts and sciences institution with just over 3000 undergraduate students that come from all 50 states and over 70 different countries to make up a very, very vibrant and active community. One of the great things as you look at Colgate is the fact that over the last couple of years, we've been able to grow and actually have had our applications go up about 140% and have more students continue to be interested in us because of the work that we've done to try to get in front of more diverse populations of students, communities, and just really introduce Colgate as an option and give students the opportunity to come to a place that has a great intellectual and academic environment, small classes, the average class size you can see is under 20, um, classes taught by faculty who are going to be engaged and build relationships with you and who also take on the academic advising and work hands on with students as they think about what they want to learn, the type of engagement they want to have beyond the classroom and their intellectual experience, but also become those mentors and facilitators of relationship with you in a variety of different ways. As you see here, over 60% of our students are studying abroad. We have over 100 different programs in 70 countries for students to be able to take advantage of in an off campus study and a variety of different ways that you can do that in your four years here at Colgate. And then also the fact that over 80% of our students are participating in research, including usually about uh, 250 to 300 students who are on campus doing funded research um, with faculty and being able to utilize the summer opportunity to be able to focus in on those academic areas that maybe you can't spend as much time on during the year when you're taking classes and really having to spend that time on your classroom experience. But beyond what you're going to do in the classroom, Colgate is a place that's all about community. We have over 200 clubs and organizations for you to be able to be a part of, and also a lot of great community service um, that you can do. One of the things that you're seeing here is the fact that our students are actually getting certified to be volunteer firefighters in the local community. We also have students that are volunteer EMTs. And so anytime you hear a response to an emergency situation, 
their Colgate students that are part of that experience. And I think that gives you a chance to know that you're going to make a difference. You're going to be able to be immersed in the community in ways that really mean something, as well as having a variety of different ways that you can be able to find something that you're interested in, that you're passionate about, that you want to give your time to whether that's an affinity group and an organization that focuses on race, culture, and identity, whether that be one of our club sports and opportunities for you to be able to continue to compete at something that you're passionate about, or again, a service organization that's going to go out and give back to the community in a way that matters to you, you can always find something to be able to do and get involved with even within a rural campus like the one that you'll find here at Colgate. We definitely don't want you to feel like you're not going to be able to have fun to be able to engage and build very close relationships. But also Colgate is a place um, with Division I athletics as well. We compete with Bucknell in the Patriot League. And in fact, the last couple of years, we've been able to win that league and send our basketball team on to the NCAA uh, two-way tournament and compete in March Madness. I um, mean, you see here one of the shots uh, last year with Jordan Burns um, over Tennessee as we got so, so close to being able to move on from the first round and be able to have our team be able to um, continue a successful run onto the tournament. But really, in general, I think what you're going to find is a level of passion, support. Actually, one of the things the university did last year was pack our basketball uh, marina to be able to watch our team compete on a big screen and bring the entire community together to be able to cheer on their fellow student athletes, their peers and community members in a really distinct and unique way. But you have over 20 um, Division I sports that are competing on campus, the club sports that I mentioned earlier, as well as a array of different ways that you can find something that you're interested in and you're passionate about to be able to engage and take part in the community aspect of what it is to be a Colgate student. But also within that, some key initiatives that have happened over the last few years. A couple scholar programs you should be aware of if you're applying to Colgate, our OUS program, as well as our alumni memorial scholars. And these are both programs that you can be um, qualified for or tagged for throughout the regular admissions process. You're not doing anything separate. But even beyond these special programs, Colgate has done a lot of intentional work over the last several years to be able to add to the resources and services that you're going to have on campus. Benton Hall, our career services center, you see here a lot of money going towards preparing students for life after college. And we do a really great job with placement with over 98% of our students each of the last five years going into a job, an internship or graduate school within six months of their graduation but also having programs like Sophomore Connections that connect you with alumni, over 150 coming back to campus every spring to engage in networking. And then our Thought Into Action program, which focuses on entrepreneurship and the opportunity for you to actually get funding to be able to start your own business venture if you have an idea or a spark in your mind that you want to get involved with. And then of course, the most important thing that Colgate has done in the last three years is our third century plan. This is a new strategic vision that's been introduced and really interwoven into the fabric of the campus in a variety of different ways. You have a plan for diversity, equity, and inclusion, which our office is being uh, stewarding in terms of bringing the best and the brightest students, no matter where they're coming from, how they identify, what their background is, and building a community that just continues to add different perspective and engagement. And then also the sustainability plan where Colgate has become the first college in the state of New York to be 100% carbon neutral. Finally, I'm just looking at our application process. These are our three deadlines. We're an early decision school as well. Holistic application review, where we're looking at everything um, within your application. We're also in a test optional um, pilot for the next three years um, and not taking that into account as we look at your application and giving you the chance to compete by just sharing your story. So if you're interested in Colgate, I'll drop the um, link in uh, the chat as well for you to be able to learn more about us. Um, but finally, just a little bit about our financial aid here as well with something called the Colgate Commitment we have our no loan initiative, as well as tuition free option based on your income for students and being a school that meets 100% of demonstrated need. These things have allowed us to again focus on access, focus on diversity, equity and inclusion and having this be a process with the support no matter what your background might be. So thanks for taking the time to learn a little bit more about us and we appreciate you being here with us this evening. Thank you so much. If you have any questions for Colgate, please put it in the Q&A. Next up, we have Gettysburg College. Good evening, everybody. And thank you to all the St. Ignatius families for joining us this evening. We really appreciate it. I am just going to lead with this. If you, in fact, are thinking about any one of these colleges, you cannot go wrong with any one of them. I have dear friends and colleagues at all of them, and they are wonderful. So here's what makes Gettysburg different. 
First, we're a college of 2,600 students, a college of liberal arts and sciences. And I won't describe us as small because we are larger than St. Ignatius. Our location is unique because we're not in a regionally famous or locally famous town. We're literally in one of the most famous towns in the world because of a famous battle that happened. And later, probably the most famous address delivered by any president, the Gettysburg Address. We utilize our nearby cities for educational, for cultural, for career related and all sorts of other things. So those aren't just cities on a map. They are places that our students spend lots of time in. We also have a small student faculty ratio. The thing I wanna draw your attention to is this. If you are a scientist, you can do paid research beginning after the first year. That's not a special opportunity, it's a guarantee. If you are thinking about public policy because of our proximity to Washington, DC, imagine meeting Supreme Court justices, talking to people in presidential cabinets, or marching in the streets of Selma with people who have marched there before through our Eisenhower Institute for Public Policy and Research. If you are a musician, whether you major in one of our great programs or not, we are one of fewer than 10 liberal arts colleges in the nation that has a music conservatory. So music is at its very best. And those pyramids in the lower left are not on Gettysburg's campus. We too have a robust study abroad program and we send typically two thirds of our students to some other country for at least a semester your financial aid and scholarships travel with you. We pay the round trip airfare for every single person and all the credits transfer back. We are a place that just like all of these fine places, it's going to make sure that we're start, starting to work on outcomes when you're a first year student. So we don't think about whether or not you're going to start a career. We don't think about whether or not you're going to get into grad school. We know what's going to happen and we're going to shape those experiences based on your desires. We have great tech, we have great arts, we have great social engagement because we owe it to you based on where we are and how we were founded by two abolitionists, two. That means we're beyond the conversation of diversity and it's really about belonging, belonging because diversity just means difference. Belonging means there's a measure of comfort. Here is what counts, just like all the other places, you can see our deadlines, but I wanna draw your attention to this. I never use the word holistic to describe admission, I call it human. So everything about you that you provide matters. We have been test optional since 2006, but it's really who you are, what you take advantage of at St. Ignatius, what you're able to do within your circumstances, how you distinguish yourself with authenticity. That's what grabs our attention when we are reading your application. So we look for reasons to accept you, not reasons to deny you. And granted, while more than 50% of the students don't get admitted, I call your chances of being admitted literally 50-50 because either you do or you don't. So we embrace this idea of adventure seekers. We embrace the idea of honesty because through our honor code, you will never be proctored in any exam at Gettysburg College from your first quiz until your last final. We don't believe in curfews because we want to treat you like young adults, not kids. We also know just as all my colleagues do, St. Ignatius does not inflate grades and we respect that. So you need to understand this, your balance, your talent, your dedication makes you a perfect fit for any one of these institutions. And we hope that Gettysburg College is one of the places that you decide to check out. Thank you for your time and thank you for being such great people and joining us this evening. Awesome, thank you so much. If you have any questions for Gettysburg College, please put it in the Q&A. Next up, we have Dickinson College. All right, 
Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us tonight. Um, it's a pleasure to be here with you. My name is Ryan Harper. I'm an admissions associate over here at Dickinson College, quite near some of my colleagues tonight. Um, but yeah. So just to jump in, I'm not going to spend a ton of times on ton of time on the facts and figures because I think you're here because you're interested in liberal, liberal arts colleges and Dickinson has a lot of the hallmarks of a liberal, liberal arts college. So small student faculty ratio, eight to one. 14 students is the average class size. We have a max class size of about of 42. Um, but yeah, we have a diverse set of students. I normally work with international students, so this is important to me, but we have 14% uh, international student population. Uh, lots of great things here. Study abroad is very important to us. 96% of Dickinsonians are uh, employed or in grad school after graduation. And we are committed in our uh, Office of Careers uh, to give 100% of students who are interested in them to have an internship. But so just an introduction to us. We were chartered in 1783 here in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. So about 45 minutes north of Gettysburg, actually, uh, depending how fast you drive. But yeah, so let me tell you a bit about what makes Dickinson a bit distinctive, what we pride ourselves on. And so I'm going to start with study abroad. So a lot of institutions like to talk about their study abroad programs. We are ranked very highly for them, number two, most popular. Uh, but so we have 18 that we run ourselves, and that's pretty unheard of among liberal arts colleges. Um, but we have all, all the Ds are Dickinson programs. We also have 50 programs that we also run through. Your financial aid follows you wherever you go. And about 63% of our students study abroad. And obviously with COVID, numbers are weird, but um, lot, basically whatever you wanna study, you will be able to study abroad with. And we really pride ourselves on that. We have programs and we, what you, something I was talking to our pre-health advisor the other day is if you're interested in pre-health and you want to study anatomy, the University of Otago in New Zealand, one of our partners, you can study in a world-renowned uh, anatomy program there. Whatever you want to do, you're able to study. And if you want to start a new language, something, something else, we also really encourage that as we teach 13 global languages. And when we talk about study abroad, we like to talk about a global education because we believe no matter what, uh, that is an important part of a liberal arts education is to really expand the way that you think about things. So we were the first college in the country to offer modern foreign language study. Um, and we have all areas. So if you're currently taking language you're not enjoying, uh, we really want you to explore something. Uh, as I said before, we're about 14% international, but I think beyond um, the idea of just studying abroad, we want you to be able to even intern abroad. Uh, we've had interns in over 35 countries. Um, so really getting you wherever you want to go in whatever mechanism that you that you want to go. Something else that we pride ourselves on is sustainability. So we were car we are carbon neutral as of 2020. We declared it on Earth Day, very fitting. But I think what I like to talk about when I talk about sustainability is the college farm. So we run a 180 acre college farm. And so no matter if you're extremely invested in environmental studies, that's something you want to follow for the rest of your life. Or if you're not super, like you're like, that's important, but not necessarily the core part of who I am. It, sustainability is going to affect you on campus. We have a sustainability requirement uh, when it comes to your classes and the types of class that you're going to, and many classes have a sustainability component to them. For instance, our Spanish two class has a sustainability component to it based on some of the topics, based on some of the ways that they approach their learning. But so talking again about the farm, uh, 100,000 pounds of produce are, are produced there. Um, and a lot of that is gonna actually go to the dining hall. You're gonna be eating food from the farm. Uh, the farm, the bio, the waste, the food waste that happens at the dining hall is gonna go back to the farm and go into a United States Department of Agriculture funded biodigester and creating power from the food waste. So whatever you're, the way, part of the ways that we've become carbon neutral is through reusing things. It's really passionate in whatever way you want to go. All of our buildings, all, each of our new buildings, are we're committed to making LEED certified, so basically just very sustainable uh, in many ways. But here's some pictures of things. We actually, so the farm is more than just for sustainability. We have events out there. We have sort of a harvest, harvest festival, which is sort of like farm prom. Uh, but also we perform the Grapes of Wrath out there. We like to use it. Uh, we just opened a farm shop downtown uh, to sell some of the stuff we make out there. It's really, it's really cool and it's really great. So to talk a bit about careers, where can you go after Dickinson? So um, here are a list of companies that some of our students have gone to. 
The founder of LL Bean, or sorry, the CEO of LL Bean is uh, a Dickinson alum currently. The owner of the, the Phillies is as well. Um, but so beyond that, I think whatever you want to study, something that I think is important to know is if you go to our website and you go to the major page, each one will have jobs, uh, internships, and graduate schools that recent alumni have gotten into. So if you're interested in Dickinson, sort of going there and being like, so I want to be a psychology major. What does that look like at Dickinson? And you can sort of look at the directions we go. Um, but uh, we also have great law school and great medical school acceptances. So 94% for law school and 95% for medical school. And think of that as all health professions, whether that's pre-nursing, pre-PA, uh, physical therapy, things like that, as well as medical school. And the medical school programming is fantastic. Um, so in terms of our uh, testing things, we're test blind like Bowdoin. So we do, we, you can submit tests, but we will not see them at all. So submit them other places. Uh, but we're also an early decision school. So November 15th and January 15th, early decision one and early decision two, as well as regular decision. We offer merit scholarships that you're automatically considered for between 15 to 30,000. We have a presidential scholarship um, that uh, you fulfill an extra, uh, extra essay for, but it's very short. And it's about sort of how you've contributed to the community. We meet 100% of financial aid. Um, that's a big thing. But yeah, thanks for listening to me. Thank you so much. If you have any questions for Dickinson, please put it in the Q&A. Oh, and there goes my timer too. All right, last but certainly not least, we have Haverford College. Hi everyone, uh, thanks for, for joining us tonight. Um, Daryl stole a little bit of my thunder because I was gonna say something that he touched on, so I'll just reiterate it, that everywhere on here is a fantastic university. I've had friends and family go to every place um, that's represented and they all had amazing experiences. You really can't go wrong. It's just about finding the right fit for you and what you're looking for, whether that's um, different programs, different opportunities, um, so all of those sorts of things. Um, Ryan from, from Dickinson was just talking about kind of the things that you can do after Dickinson College. Another is work in college admissions. I'm a proud Dickinson alum myself. Uh, so in addition to any questions you might have about Haverford, I would be uh, more than happy off the record to talk about the Dickinson experience as well. Um, but I'm here to talk about Haverford. Um, so Haverford College is, uh, we're a liberal arts institution, you probably could have guessed that. We have around 1400 students and um, our campus is actually 200 acres and the campus itself is a nationally recognized arboretum. So we have an amazing nature trail, duck pond. Um, it's kind of a hub, not just for our students, but also the surrounding community of a place that you'll see people often walking their dogs, pushing a stroller and coming to be here because it's a really, really gorgeous campus. You can see it behind me. You can see it in some of the pictures um, that can't really be overstated. But even though we're a little bit of a suburban campus, we have um, some amazing opportunities in terms of our location. We are about 20 minutes outside of Philadelphia. I'm actually at home in Philadelphia right now. Um, it takes about 25 minutes to get to and from the city uh, to Haverford's campus. And so all of the resources that Philadelphia has to offer uh, are really at the fingertips of Haverford students. We even have a program through which we give away train tickets for free. Essentially, all you have to do is fill out a form that what you're doing is academically or culturally enriching. And I know students that have filled it out and said, I'm going to eat downtown at this restaurant. And then they get the train tickets and get to go downtown. Um, so all everything that Philadelphia has to offer, whether that's museums, whether that's sports teams, whether it's performances are really um, at the disposal of, of our students. So the three pillars that the Haverford community live by are trust, concern, and respect. And so we really highly value the student voice and student agency, we believe, um, to one of the highest degrees in, in the country. So this is exemplified in take-home tests. Virtually every assessment is actually going to be take-home on our campus. Um, we have proctorless exams, and then also our finals weeks in both the spring and fall semester are self-scheduled. So you are actually kind of choosing when and where you're going to be at your best. And so this allows every student to kind of figure out what works best for them um, as an individual and then reach their full academic potential. Um, so we also have an honor code. Uh, our student body, it's 100% student written and every semester there's a meeting in which they re-ratify the honor code. Um, ours is a 10 page uh, document. It encompasses all of academic and social life um, and it's, it's not really a, a set of rules so much as shared values that everyone on our campus has. 
um, and is, is coming to agreement on. It's um, ratified every semester. And so it's ever changing. It's changing as the world is changing um, and as Haverford is changing too. So it really allows us to stay true to our roots as a place founded on trust, concern, and respect, um, but also change as the world changes and, and Haverford itself is changing. Uh, we also meet 100% of demonstrated need of, of all accepted students. So it actually doesn't matter what round you apply in, uh, what your citizenship status is, um, when you apply, anything like that. Uh, that's really our commitment to make the Haverford um, uh, opportunity affordable in, in that we want every student that is considering Haverford to not have that be a deciding factor um, in their decision. And then we also limit the loans. So the maximum amount of loans that we would include in a financial aid package is $3,000. And if a family makes under 60,000, it's actually no loans. Uh, the senior thesis is kind of the, the capstone, the culmination of the Haverford experience. Um, so this is something that every single graduating senior will get to do. It is not reserved for you know, honors programs or specific departments. Everyone gets to do this. And so it allows every student to actually get to do original hands-on research. Um, and you can also do that before you're a senior, as early as your first year, you can be working in, in labs and working directly with professors. Um, and it can also influence kind of what you do after college. So 66% of our grads uh, go on to receive higher degrees um, than uh, their bachelors uh, at Haverford. We actually, over the last, knock on wood, um, seven years, 100% of applicants to law school have been accepted, 95% to, to medical school. But I think what's more important than that is that we're looking for students that are really passionate and intellectually curious, um, and they have their love of learning kind of fostered on our campus. And then they can take the skills that they're learning here, um, whether it's through the honor code or through being a really student run and student agency. Um, a heavy place and, and become ethical leaders in the world kind of beyond their time um, at Haverford. Uh, that has been uh, my time. Again, thank you all so much for being here and for joining us. You have a lot of amazing options um, at your fingertips and, and just want you all to continue to do that research so that you know what, what's right for you at this point. Thank you. All right, awesome, thank you so much. If you have any questions for Haverford College, please put it in the Q&A. If you all could actually join me, my panelists, and come back on video, I'd love to see your beautiful faces. <laughs> thank you, thank you, awesome. Well, I do want to thank you all, my panelists and presenters. You have been absolutely fantastic. Thank you so, so much. And my attendees, my participants, thank you so much for joining us and being here. Remember, this was just an appetizer session. It went really quick. And like we like to say, obviously time flies when you're having a good time. So I hope you had a great time. I hope you got some great information, some contact information. And now you can check out these universities on your own as well. Please remember uh, when you go ahead and close out the window, a very quick five question survey will appear. We do appreciate your feedback. And also the words very quick are literally on your screen for a reason. It is very, very quick. So please take uh, just a couple minutes. Sign up for more sessions. There are more college presentations, uh, presentations offered. And so please check them out on the website. And again, last but not least, if you are missing out on the fun or someone else's or you want to relive it with us, a recording will be available at strivescan.com backslash Ignatius. With that said, you all, again, thank you so, so much. And I hope you have a great evening. Bye, everybody.